Now in this problem, we will consider a three-zone arrangement in order to find the radiative heat transfer for each surface. Now, in this problem, it says here that we have two parallel disks of 60 centimeter diameter. So imagine this um, oval being the disks and they are parallel with each other and of course they have they should have the same dimensions. So let's try to draw. Um, I hope I made it. Uh, let's just copy it so that we're sure that they have the same dimensions. Okay, and then uh, this diameter is we have here 60 centimeter and then they are separated by a distance of 15 centimeter. So this is not the scale of course but um, so you have an idea of how it looks like. So that's 15 cm. And then it is completely surrounded by a large enclosure. So we usually represent this closure as if it's um, something like a dome but of course it's not um, it's not always the case but you can imagine this I'll just draw some rectangle just to um, give you an idea but this is particularly large so I have to draw um, something like a large enclosure and we should note that this enclosure is or has a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. So let's have something like T3 or let's have it TR for such case. And this means that this is the um, refractory um, surface. So I'll be talking about it after we've already written all the given. So we have T1 that's 540 degrees Celsius. Actually, it doesn't matter if if you select the other one, it'll just be the same. So E1 is equal to 0 0.7. But of course, if you have something like T1 here, uh, that should be the emissivity one, and it it's not allowed to like interchange. But if you would um, have T1 and E1 right here, then that's that, that's perfectly okay. So 300 degrees Celsius, and then for the second emissivity, we have 0 0.5. And then the question is, what is the net uh, radiant heat transfer with each surface? And it says here to do not include the backside exchange, only that from the surface of it facing each other. So we're not actually allowing this um, heat exchange at the back side. So this is what uh, the problem talks about. So we're just considering the heat exchange at the surface and like this and of course um, those that are being transmitted to the larger surface so now uh, this is what we call the three zone arrangement and when we say three zone the best or the easiest way that we can solve this is through the single source single sink lumped adiabatic refractory zone or we call this the SSR so it stands again for single zone, single sink, and lump adiabatic refractory zone. So in this case, it is usually um, depicted by a network arrangement of circuits. And in today's video, you'll learn how to like remember. You'll be um, reviewing again your um, electricity, but just some simple arrangement. So in your Paris handbook, if you would look at it. You can see actually here the three zone arrangement and there are a lot of um, discussions here but the one that is very helpful here is this portion the generalized electrical network analog for a three zone enclosure and that this is what we'll be using so i can take a photo of this and then let's have it here on our discussion and i'll be simplifying it in a more in an easier way so this is the ssr and this is the method that we'll be using but I will have to um, simplify this further because if we, we should note that the resistance or the view factor for each for this one one or the resistance of itself will usually be zero provided that they don't see each other. So in this case, I'll be removing all this one one two two and then this rr. So in this case, I'll be removing this uh, one one two two and then rr simplify our formulations 
and I will start with the node instead of this um, so to like grounded I think so we have um, though my drawing is a little messed up so we start with this node and then let's try to have um, the resistors or resistor and then goes like this and then it forms something like a triangle so it forms a delta connection and then actually this one is like you just have to remember the arrangement is like a triangle oops with resistors on each side it's something like that and then there's a node here and then finally we have this one and then there's a node okay so I've simplified this expression and then we can now label all of it so I'll be labeling this first node here as E1 and then let's try a different color and I'll be using this to type so we have E1 then we have here W sub 1 the node here and then we have W sub R and I'll be using small r okay and then we do have here W 2 and then finally we have E2 and of course the other one here the next thing node would be E and then R okay so we're pretty much done with all the labels and the one thing that we were left now is to label the resistances so um, just a quick um, overview about this um, SSR it is always assumed that all adiabatic uh, refractory surfaces are perfect diffuse mirrors so if we would um, provide an incidental ray from a surface then upon striking another surface it will uh, reflect in a diffuse manner and not in a you know specular um, reflection and then um, I just have to specify that this W 1 2 and 3 are known as the radiosities or it could be said that the value it gives would be the radiation that leaves the surface per unit time per unit area so um, it could also be said that uh, the surfaces here are just the three surfaces so here we have a1 a2 and a3 and then they see each other and nothing else okay so it's like the arrangement are just the three of them we can also um, write here a1 so we have a1 for this circle or disk and then a2 for the other one and then a3 for the last or we could say also that as since I used R here let me just write it as a sub R just to be consistent with all of it so the next one here is that you could imagine this being this E1 and W1 being the voltage potentials so in this case if we have a resistance here if there's a voltage here and then a resistance we could take the voltage per unit resistance or per resistance and then we can know the current under each or within each connection or each voltage you know difference so if in this case we could see, say that um, I or the current is our Q and then the voltage is our E or W so those are the voltage and to, fu to finish the connection we just need the resistance for each and remember resistance can be given depending on the nodes that these resistances actually occur so if we have E1 and W1 that is in between these uh, two radiosities of E1 and W1 and this is somehow something like um, this is the source of the heat and this one is the 
radiosities for W. So in this case, I have um, a resistance that is equal to A1 E1 over um, the reflectivity of actually this is not the resistance but the conductance so if we're asked to find what is the resistance we can just take the reciprocal of that value so this would be the resistance for bit in between these two voltage um, readings or uh, radiosity so we can also represent this um, reflectivity one into 1 minus e1 over a1 and then emissivity 1 so we could replace that for this and then of course for the resistance so we will be implying the same concept so in this case we have the second area and then e2 over reflectivity 2 which is also which in turn the resistance would be the reciprocal so the resistance would be 1 minus e2 over a2 and then e2 so for the resistances for each um, resistance in between two radiosities we have um, 1 over for this uh, let, let me just do this for the first one here so this is 1 over a1 and then f12 so because we're referring to the it's something like in between these two objects so basically they should have some b view factors and then the area is to be considered for the resistance that's why this is how it works but imagine this um, area one here around this junction one or node one and then this is where it goes for the radiation that's why it's somehow related to this e1 which is the source of the radiation so you can imagine that being um, the free space that are that this um, surface one can see okay and we do have now for this one to R in a logical manner or by symmetry of the resistance as we could say that that's a1 and then f1 to R and then of course if we have a2 from this node then we can say that that's a2 and then f2 R and finally for this node for E R N and W R we could say that there's um, let's say the conductance would be a r and then e sub r all over the reflectivity of r which the resistance would be equal to 1 over e r and then a r over e r okay so these are all the expressions that we need in order to find the net heat transfer with each surface so now for the net heat transfer, we're basically referring to the heat transfer in between these two voltage um, readings. So for Q1, that is simply equal to E1 minus W1 over the resistance. And then of course for Q2, we need to find this E2 minus W2 over the resistance. So this is resistance 1 and then, I oh know. This is this resistance and this one is um, this reading here or the resistance. But to do that, we need to apply another law on our physics, which is the Kirchhoff's law. So remember, if a current, any current that comes from um, a path, if it enters a node, the sum of all these currents should be equal to zero. So in this case, so for KCL, we know that um, for the KCL, we can say that all the currents going to the node would be would sum or would sum up to zero. So in this case, if I need the current, remember, in our equation for um, current, based from V is equal to I R, we know that the current is equal to the ratio of the voltage and the resistance. So in this case, if I would be taking the voltage from this um, um, from E1 to W1, I could say that that's simply the difference in between these two um, voltages. And since the flow of current is from this point going to W1, I could just take this E1 as my first voltage. So in that case, I'll just be taking this as if this is the first voltage. So I have ER and then the volt, I mean E1, the voltage drop for the first 
um, path would be E1 over uh, E1 minus W1 and then the resistance. Since this is a conductance, I'll be using the resistance. So that's 1 minus E1 over A1 and then E1. And then we add the current that comes in, the other current coming from WR to W1. So that's WR minus W1 and then we have um, one minus um one minus e r and then oh i think it's a uh, one over a one f one r so that's one over a one f one r and then we add the other one which is going to this um, portion from w two so this w two minus w one and then we subtract um, this I mean we divide with the resistance so that's 1 I mean 1 over a1 f1 2 so 1 over a1 f1 2 okay so this is equal to 0 now we can try to we will try to evaluate all of these the value for each of them but um, from our figure we could see or from our problem we could say that um, the third one which is the refractory surface it says here that it is very large or the enclosure is very, very large so in this case if it is the resistance in this expression we have something like 1 minus e over r and then to um, over infinity and in this case the resistance becomes 0 which makes the conductance at a very high value so if that's the case if we have a current that's flowing to er and then wr and then knowing that the resistance would be very high we could say that uh, this becomes the current becomes zero at this point so in this case we can neglect the effects of this er and wr for the voltage drop and we could say that this ends up being the value of our er itself and because that's the only source and you don't have any current so it's like um you can imagine this wire just simply being connected to this node so it's something like that you don't offer any resistance in this manner so that's simply er so in this case since we don't have any wr in this case we will be using this value for our wr that equates to er now so you can represent this as if this is E1 minus W1 and then 1 minus E1 over A1, E1 and then plus. This becomes ER minus W1 and then plus. Equal to 0. So now we can try to substitute all of the values, but first of all, we need to find the values that we, we have here. Now, E1 is like the emissive power of a block body that is evaluated at the temperature that is, you know, at the side of this surface. So if that's the case, then we can consider the surface, but we'll be using the block body as if we're considering a block body as a source. So in this case, E1 is simply equal to the area and then we have the um, Stefan Bosman constant and then d1 to the fourth so it's like this so area one I mean we don't actually we don't have any area because it's the emissive power so it's like representing that in terms of flux so we don't have to like write the area anymore so we have here 5.6704 times 10 to the negative 8 and then we have the temperature one which is 500 I think 540 so that's 540 plus 273.15 and then we raise that to the fourth so therefore E1 or the emissive power at 1 that is um, emitted from the source 1 or our area 1 would be equal to 
2, 2, and the unit will be watts per meter squared. Now we can also check on our resistance one, I mean in this resistance, so we could say that 1 minus E1 over A1, E1 is equal to 1 minus 0 0.7, and then that's divided by the area one, which is, of course, if the the this um disk is 60 centimeter in diameter we could say that that is 60 squared and then pi over 2 i mean pi over 4 that's the area for that and then 3600 divided by 4 would be 0 0.09 so the area here converted to meter would be 9 over 100 and then that's pi so multiply that by 0 0.7 so the resistance in between those two radiosities would be equal to 1.5158. Now let's try um, finding the values for our um, this resistance first. So we have 1 over A1 F12. So we don't have any problem with the area 1, but how about this F12? And remember, this F12 is actually the view factor of this area 1 to area 2. And this is a parallel disk of course opposed to each other facing you know um, each other so what we need to do th there is to find a graph that would give us the view factor because we can't use this because this is actually for parallel plates and we don't have any uh, thing that it, that has something to do with this one so the best way for this is to look at F12 and as you can see here at the table or at the figure there is this um, figure 5-13 and there is um, a figure here which, sa which says that the radiation between parallel planes directly opposed and in this case we have disks. So the curves 1 and 5 would give us the value for the view factor for um, given that the disks are radiation, radiation, radiating parallel with each other and they are opposed. So the question would be what or what curve or line would I be using so you'll be using one for this case so the number five is just like the second option but you will when you try to like find the um, va the value for the view factor um, we usually select the first one of all the lines here so that's one and then it says here that we take we need to take the ratio of the smaller side or diameter over the distance between planes so in this case we need to find the ratio and the ratio is actually the diameter which is 60 and then the distance in between them which is 15. The ratio therefore is equal to 4. So in this case we try to look at number 4 which is or the value of 4 which is right here. So that's 4 and then we take a look at the curve number 1 so that we can have the disks. So this is number 1 and then we end up with the intersection of 4 and then 1. So in this case, we project that to the left. So we project that to the left. And basically, what we can see here is around 0.6. So as an estimate, I'll be using 0.6 for the view factor of 1 to 2. So that's an easy way if you could, if we have, if you're given by the graphs for view factors. So in this case, um, we can say that F12 is equal to 0 0.60. So I can now have the value for this. That's 1 over, since A1 is already obtained A1, so I'll just copy it 9 over 100 pi, and then we have 0 0.6 for F12. The value for this is actually equal to 5.8946. And now let's try solving for ER. So in this case, ER is the same concept as this one. So we just need to find the emissive power with respect to the temperature at that refractory material or reservoir. So that's 4. And then this is equal to 5.6704 times 10 to the negative 8. And then TR is actually the temperature of the enclosure so that's 100 I think okay so we have 100 
plus 273.15 raised that to the fourth power. So er is equal So ER is equal to 1099.3791 and that's watts per meter squared. Now the next thing that we need to do is to find this 1 over A1F1R. So we have 1 over A1F1R. So we don't have any problem with this area 1 since we already had the value. But for F1R, we need to um, find the value. So I'll be using... Uh, the matrix has just to give you an idea of how all these view factors work. Because m is equal to 3 and that's an enclosure, we could say that all the view factors is equal to 9. So the matrix would be something like f1, um, 1, f1, 2, and then f1, r. The next one will be f2, 1, f2, 2, and then f2, r. And then finally we have f, um, r1, f, r, Two, and then F R R. So this is how the view factors work. And then knowing that this um, F11 and F22 doesn't don't see each other because uh, you know they are plates. So technically we can zero this F11 and then this F22. Now knowing that we have already obtained the value of f1 which is 0 0.6 so this is 0 0.60 and i need to find this f1r from this and remember by enclosure law we could say that f11 plus f12 plus f1r would always be equal to 1 so in this case f1r would be equal to 0 0.4 since f12 is equal to 0 0.60 so in this case, I can substitute now the value. So the area 1 would still be the same, 9 over 100 pi. And then we multiply that with 0.4. So therefore, 1 over A1 F1R would be equal to 8.8419. Okay? So now we do have the value of E1 for this resistance and also this one, the resistance. And then finally this resistance. So now let's try substituting all of these values and... With this, we will be able to get um, now. Um, if had this been um, had this equation been W one alone, we can just solve for the W one. But since we have W two here, and we don't have any. Way we can determine w2 from all the given here we should be using another kcl in this case so this is kcl at node 1 so that's at node 1 so we'll be applying kcl again at node 2 it's somewhere here so this just have this lemma node 1 node 2 and then this one is the node r so in this case i have um, node 2 here and then we will try to draw the current coming to the node and then we'll set those all to zero. So in that case, deriving the general um, Kirchhoff's current law, which is equal to, you know, this becomes zero. So we could say that we have something like um, E2 minus W2 divided by this um, resistance that you can see here that's 1 minus e2 over a2 e2 so that's 1 or minus e2 over a2 e2 and then we add again the difference between junction i mean voltage 1 and 2 and then of course the area here would be a2 and then f21 and then of course we add the one that's left which is equal to it should be wr but since it's equal to er so we could just write er and then w2 and then we add i mean divide this with 1 over a2 and then f2 r it is equal to 0 now we need to find all the values of this again and we already have this e2 and er so we don't have to like find it again but for this case we need to um, evaluate so we have 1 minus e2 over a2 and then e2 so we have 1 minus E2 is actually equal to 0 0.5. And then dividing this by A2, and A2 is the same as A1, so that's 9 over 100 pi. 
then we multiply this by 0.5 so we can just cancel this and we'll be able to have 109 um, over 9 times pi and that is 3.5368 and then for our 1 over a to f21 the value would be um, we don't have any problem with area 2 so because that's the same area but how about f21 so if we would look back at this um, uh, matrix we can see that f if we try to use enclosure law um, we can't actually perform that yet because as you can see here this we don't we are not um, I mean f21 is not the only one that's left here in this row and in that case what I'll be using is known as the reciprocity law so by reciprocity law I've mentioned this before but again I'll be talking about this so the general expression of reciprocity law is that if you have an area 1 and then the view factor from 1 to 2 that's equal to area 2 and then the view factor for 2 1 so I'll be using a1 f1 to I'll be using the same equation as this one because we already have a1 and that's actually equal to um, 9 over 100 pi that's area 1 and f12 is the one that we already obtained that's 0 0.60 and then again a2 since a2 and a1 are equal so that's also 9 over 100 pi so f21 is the one that we need so we can cancel this because they're the same that's why f21 is actually equal to 0 0.6 as well so we can substitute here 0 0.60 but we've proven that you might be um, inspecting it and then you'll be finding that it's the same but of course we went, wanted to prove it using the reciprocity law so the value for this one is 5.8946 the same as the one from these calculations I think yeah, this one so I think we're now only left with this 1 over a2 and then f to r so if we go back to this um, we could see that this f21 is from the calculation we have 0 0.6 so that's why if we, we need to find this f2r we could use the enclosure law and with that we can say that f2r is equal to 0 0.4 because that's 0 0.6 and this row should equal to 1 so we could say that for we have a value that's 1 over a2 that's 9 over 100 pi and then also 0.4 so this is just the same as the one that we've obtained so that's 8.8419 so now that we already obtained all the values that we need and sorry for our calculation so let's just rewrite um i think i need to find e2 first ah yes because it is not yet obtained so let's try e2 so that's simply the stefan Boltzmann constant and then t2 to the fourth so we have Then of course T2 is the temperature of the surface of the disk 2. So what's that? That's um, 300. So we have 300. Mm, actually we do have a lot of computation already. So that's um, 300 plus 273.15 Kelvin and raised to the fourth. So now we could find E2 and E2 is equal to 6119.0906 that's watts per meter squared and finally we can substitute all of these values to the kcl the second kcl at node 2 so that is equal to and now since um, taking a look at this equation here, which is our, um, we have an expression here with W and W2 as well as this one, we have W and W2. We could um, do something like two equations to unknowns, simplify first and then two equations to unknowns, and then we will be able to find W1 and W2. So if we would like to simplify the first and second equation, what we'll be getting is 
W1 is equal to 21105.5841 that's watts per meter squared and then W2 is equal to 9611.1161 watts per meter squared but that's not yet the answer what we need here is actually the um, the Q for uh, the the difference of the voltage of E1, W1, and then E2, W2. So I've already written that here. It's like we need to find um, this node for E1 minus W1 and the resistance at that point. So in that case, we have Q1. So we have Q1 is equal to 2749.1161 the W1 which is 21105.5841 and the resistance in between these two is actually equal to 1.5158 so solving for this we know that the value for Q1 is equal to 4212.6578 I mean 6 I think it's 658 Eight seven, so that's six five, and then eight seven. So knowing that the unit here is watts per meter squared, and then this the unit for the resistance would be the reciprocal of one. I mean, one over meter squared. So that cancels out for meter squared. That's why we're left with watts for the unit. So this is the net heat transfer for the first junction. So Q two is actually equal to um, it's right here. This is our Q2. So we can just substitute W2 from this equation. So that's 6119.0906 minus 9611.1161. We divide this by um, 3.5368. And the answer would be equal to Q2 that is negative 987.3404. The unit would be watts. Okay, so in this case, the current for that enters the node one, which gives us the net heat transfer for the surface, is equal to, um, we have four two one two point six five eight seven, and our assumption for the current or the direction of current is correct. Now for, um, Q two we have nine eight seven point three four zero four, and that's negative. So in this case, our assumption for the current that enters the node for W2 would be um, incorrect. So probably the current should be something like leaving for, to the node. And just to tell you um, um, a short um, idea, if you take um, Q1 plus Q2, so we take the net of this 1 and 2. So that's typically the, um, the net heat radiation that is um, emitted by each surface or by the two surface with each other so the because the question here is the region heat transfer with each surface with we're actually referring to the surface itself and not the two surfaces um, having its radiation with each other because if that's the case then it will be asking the net heat transfer between surfaces and your answer will be something like the q1 and then plus the q2 but in this case it's the um, just the sink and then the radiosity that is involved that are involved in the computation by the way when I say it's the sink I'm referring sink or the um, the source it's either the sink or the source so I'm referring to the E's like E1 E2 these are the sink and the source something like this okay and then when I talk about the radiosity I'm referring to W1, W2, W3 so these are the radiosities okay so that's our answer and this is quite a long computation but the idea here is just to draw the network using this general formula from analog circuits from the Paris handbook and then you try to eliminate those that are not included in the computation so if the resistance becomes very high what you need is that the source will just retain its value and then we will assume that this, that's just a wire without resistance so it 
takes the value of our er instead of having wr and the cases when uh, the resistance becomes zero or yes and then or the conductance becomes very high is that when the area is very large this could be greater than one and two and then of course when the area is insulated so if the area is insulated we know that it offers um, no heat transfer because the air, the that area is insulated so technically the Q becomes a zero and the only the source would be considered in that computation so this is how it works for this analog for a three zone enclosure I used to call this the SSR but SSR is a general more general term for the the three zone enclosure okay so that's all and I hope you've learned something from radiation because I think this is the most complicated of all the heat transfer because um, if you were talking about this um, you know we used to solve these two problems before the, the these two right here and remember these are just um, it's like at the tip of the iceberg of radiation because they are just you know a small object with reference to the surrounding and they are just simply exposed to natural radiation but when it comes to objects that are relatively close to each other and then they exhibit this incident radiation being intercepted by each of the object or the surface of the object we could say that there exists this uh, view factor that makes computation more tedious okay so that's it for radiation and um, see you again on next discussion